Okay, that's the panel put back on and screwed up. Uh, if you do get any bits of, um, which, well, you should get the sealer squeezing out, don't wipe it now. Wait till it dries. You can just take it off nicely. Um, right, next problem I find is we have to put this on, which is the timing plate. You've got a little pin there, and nine times out of ten, it goes too far and it, it just isn't right. So what I do, if I can find my little pliers, there we go. Let me take this out. What I do is I put a washer on there, but I scallop it out because it won't allow the pin to go back in. So, <clears throat> get that on the scallop. And it won't go in. Okay, so we've now got the washer behind it with the scallop or the recess that I've cut out and the pin is in. And that will now hold that beautifully. But the problem also is that gap in there is so big, considering this is for the timing, you got that much movement. So when we put everything back together, I try and centralise that before I tighten it all up. And um, I fit, I always fit, a sense electronic ignitions. Um, so we've got a new rotor, which is in place of, of the old one for the uh, points. The problem, as you know, with the points is you've got the condensers to go wrong, you've got the points to go wrong, you've got a gap um, nightmare. A sent electronic ignition, you can set the timing in less than two minutes, and they're just good. So that's been a bit tight. Let's give it a tap. You've obviously got to be careful with these because there is a magnet in the middle. So that is very tight. Use the old one to knock it on. Right, so I now visually check to make sure that is in the middle, and it is. <clears throat> so now it's just an easy job. Washer, spring washer, 14 mil nut. Again, flat side in. And that's that on. Let's get rid of that now. The next job is to fit the electronic ignition. Now, this fits like this. But, before you set it, you wind it all the way anti-clockwise. And then when you come to set it, which you do by lining 
the center or C <clears throat> line up with this. But you never get enough forward movement or clockwise movement to set the timing because it's just done by this red light coming on. So I've learnt before I even attempt to put this on, I always take this area out, ex extend these slots on all three. So I'll go and do that and then I shall come back. It's just the easy way because we're going to get all the wiring tucked under the engine nice and neatly. The last thing you want to do is have to pull it all off and start filing it out um, when you can't get enough movement to time it up correctly. So <laughs> it's the easy way. Okay, so now, as you can see, we've opened all the holes up. And that means that we can get... In fact, let's just pop that on. Nice little... Uh, don't forget the rubber gasket. Which now means that we can get the full movement when it comes to setting the timing. the screws in you get all the little screws supplied as well so it's just an easy job but it just means that as I say when you um, time these up you never get enough movement to get it dead right so To start with, it goes as far anti-clockwise, a little bit of the foil, anti-clockwise as you can get it, um, and then once the centre cylinder marker is next to that, you then just simply rotate it until this red light comes on. That's the timing set. It's done. It's that easy. So that's that and just need to put that on, keep it all secure and we'll now put the um, starter motor in, the, the water pipe and the uh, oil pump and uh, oil feed pipes back in a minute. 